Please welcome Mr. Ian Hutchinson. Ian Hutchinson is the lifestyle strategist. It's a boy. <laughs> who here's got a plan for their own life? Hands up. Hands up who doesn't have a plan for their own life. And hands up those that don't really give a shit either way. <laughs> up the back. Normally the life seems to be getting dressed in clothes you buy for work, driving through traffic in your car you're still paying for, in order to get to the job that you need so you can pay for the clothes, pay for the car, and pay for the home you leave empty all day in order to afford to live in it. Now, it doesn't quite make sense to us. Now, I'm if you're looking for a life, you need the man from Life by Design. I want a life. Everybody else has got one and I haven't. <laughs> We've had people from 17 to 70 come and do our program. So when asked what's the best time to do this program, I think the best time is now. Four gurus, each with a distinctly different system for success. We meet them, see the system, and follow some of the students hoping to have their lives transformed. When the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. Ian Hutchinson was a 25-year-old climbing the corporate ladder when he realised he was a workaholic. The more he looked, the more people he saw seriously questioning their way of life and few seemed to have any answers. So he added a diploma of psychology to his business degree. He studied self-improvement and career courses around the world. And at age 33, Ian launched himself as the lifestyle strategist. So what we're going to go through today, we're going to have a look at some, uh, some areas around work-life balance. Hopefully we're going to stimulate some new ideas. Because we're going to stimulate some ideas, what I'd like to do is a quick practice if I could. Could I get you all to, to lean off your chairs for me? Everyone lean off your chairs, put your hands out like this. What I'd like you to do is rub your hands together like this, turn to the person next to you and go, gee, I'd like to stimulate you. Ian gives around 50 keynote presentations every year. He usually has less than an hour to get people to take life seriously. If you only had 30 minutes to live, what do you reckon you'd do with your life? Absolutely. Hit the surf. That's terrific. Gavin, you know the most common response we get is actually to make love to the first thing that moves. Yeah. So if I was you ladies and gentlemen, I'd sit very, very still. Yeah. I think one of the keys is really just engaging the audience and there's a whole combination of things that go in the, in the recipe for that. So yeah, humour, jokes can be really useful when moving into some of the more serious stuff. My last real job was actually working for the Threadbow Ski Resort and it was a great job. This is actually a view from my apartment in Threadbow, and you might be going, well, why is he showing me that? The reason is this is actually a view from Bimbadine Lodge in Threadbow. And for some of you, that might bring back memories. Because at 10 to 12 on July 31, 1997, this whole lodge came tumbling down. Yeah, when Threadbow happened, I was actually in the States doing a career development program. The day I arrived, I, um, I saw on CNN that this tragedy had happened in Threadbow. And I felt really helpless because you know, I knew most of these people, but the, the problem was, being so far away, half around the world, I couldn't actually do anything about it. Now, I lost 10 of my friends in that tragedy, and it, it could have been 11, but Stuart Diver survived. Within a minute or two, he was holding his hand over Sally, his wife's mouth, to stop the freezing, dirty, oily water actually going down her throat. Tragically, Sally died within a minute or two. Now, many of us know the story. 65 cold hours later, Stuart was taken out of what was literally a rubble tomb. Well, I think the Threadbow tragedy really gave him a bit of a shake and a wake-up to, you know, we don't know how long we're going to be around for. So, for me personally, it was a totally humbling experience that the transition that I was attempting to make myself was the right way to go. I believe Stuart survived for two main reasons. Number one, Stuart lived in the now, but he also had a vision for the future. Although in his short term, his vision for the future was that he had to get out of there to tell Sally's mum, his wife's mum, actually what had happened to Sally. So he lived in the now, but he also had a vision for the future. So why am I telling you this story? Well, the reason is because I think it's very much the same with our own lives and our own lifestyle planning. If we know more about who we are now, then we're more likely to know what we want in the future. For those ready um, to take a good hard look at themselves, been, um, Ian and his team run weekend workshops in Sydney for small groups. The nine people here have each paid about $800 for a two and a half day lifestyle makeover. 
it's almost like the external world's changing so quickly. Let's stop for a second. Let's take a step back and let's work out what we want and then let's move forward with more informed decisions so we can take more control out of where we, we want to go rather than letting it just happen to us. What we've tried to do is really put together a program that combines you know, a bit of psychology, some career development and some, some lifestyle planning and really trying to give people some real practical tools because I think there's... You know, people are just looking for an answer and they're looking for a process that they can follow. It's almost painting my numbers. Three quick questions. What's your background? What do you want to get out of the program? And thirdly, what's the best thing that's happened to you in the last month? OK, so we've got about five minutes. Off we go. I want a life. Everybody else has got one and I haven't. <laughs> Just the last five or six years has just been literally work, eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, no interest. Sue Nunn has a busy career in IT, but she's discovered that good money and interesting work doesn't guarantee you a great life. It is actually a bit of a midlife crisis. Um, you know, I'm turning 40. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be like this. What have I done with my life? Where am I going to go? And I am running out of time. They came down here for three months of temp work and make a bit of money and then go back home to Queensland. Well, at the time I was married, uh, we separated shortly after I got down here, so pretty much the last five years has been all about work. So, so you interviewed Mike and Molly? Yeah, Mike is feeling very frustrated with his job and dissatisfied and I suppose trying to figure out what he wants and his priorities and how... Yeah, we do say to people, you know, at the end of this two and a half days, you're actually going to be exhausted. And they usually are because very few people take this amount of time to think this closely about their own lives and that can actually be quite mentally exhausting for them. Great. Kendall. <laughs> I was interviewing Danielle and um, Danielle's background is accounting. Kendall Serich has spent the last few years, years going up now. in the world of and, event um, management. She, while her job satisfaction has been headed the other way. I've been drifting for several years now, not really having a direction to move in and being happy to go along with whatever's happening at the time. But yeah, it obviously hasn't suited me because I've now come to this point where I'm like, where am I going? I don't like where I am. I want to be somewhere else. What am I going to do? Let's get clear about what we want in work. Let's get clear about what we want in life. Let's design this as an ideal. And then let's cost out, how much does that cost? And what most people find is actually not as much as they think. If you know how much it is, then you know how much money you need to be looking at up here. What we're going to try and do by the end of this workshop is have clarity about what those things are and give you the tools to go away and get clarity about this. So the next thing to do is to get you looking at life success and life priorities. Well, the process starts very much with a key foundation stone of looking at what is success in life. My simple definition of success in life is to be as happy as possible. Now you might go, great Einstein, you know, that's not rocket science, but the key is the next step. What is it that actually makes you happy? And that's the hardest question to answer. So what we look at is some key, what we call key lifestyle priorities. Things like health, uh, purposeful work, family. And it's up to the individual to form their recipe, a combination of what all those issues are. And there's about 10 key life priorities that we get people to select from. Helping Ian help participants help themselves are facilitators Tanya Mottle and Michelle Sanson. In fact, once the weekend is set up, Ian takes off. You're in great hands tomorrow and Sunday with Michelle and Tanya. Okay. Never, seldom, sometimes, often, always. Integrity. Always, right. Always is valued. Okay. Integrity is like, well, it's my, my top thing. Like, it's so key to everything. It comes before everything else, so, yeah. Is there anything else that's come out of what you've been doing this morning in terms of identifying that blueprint? <laughs> my interests, my values, my skills and personality. Things that I thought would come out on top of sort of further down the list, yeah. but the same sorts of things that I thought would be there, but just in, uh -huh. in a different sort of way. Yeah. It's not a comfortable thing to stick your hand up and go, I can't cope. I just can't figure out what's going on here and where I'm going wrong and why I keep making the same mistakes. But I don't... I think I've ever come across too many people that can do, do it on their own.
So now this is the positive and negative influences. Let me pass them around. The sappers and the zappers. Let's have a look first of all at the destructive and negative people in your life. All along, it's slowly trying to push them out of their comfort zone, little steps, little steps, little steps out of the comfort zone because we get so stuck in the same way of doing things. And if you want something to change in your life, you've got to change something. So it's a whole bunch of little changes. I'm going to be interviewing you. We're going forward five years. You know the answer to everything. Everything has worked out brilliantly. Hi, Sue. I hear that you're a big success in your area of work. Sometimes participants are pushed so far out of their comfort zone, they actually squirm. <laughs> what is your area of work? I run a uh, chain of day spas around the world and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Something along those lines. <laughs> I've always been amazed when people can actually sit there with any degree of clarity and say, well, this is where I'm going to be in five years and these are the steps I'm putting in place and this is where I'm going to be in ten years. It's like, I have no idea. I've never had any idea. How did you get from there to all those countries? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> so it all just happened? It did. Yeah, wow. It was a miracle. So what uh, makes your business different from, say, a similar service provider? If there is one. Um, and how much money are you making at the moment? Oh, squillions. Squillions? <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit of fun, it's really interactive, but it's got a real bottom line meaning to it. And I think it's a nice way of breaking them through to give them more permission to solve their own lives. One of the core parts of the course is really focusing on all of your negative thoughts and then um, having a look at how you can turn those into positives. I think my biggest barrier is that there is not being afraid of people saying no to me and being, or, or taking it personally. Mm, for sure. They went through this process of dumping down all of the negative thoughts that I had about why I couldn't do things. Once we had done that, I went through had a look at sort of how I could turn sort of these top, say, ten negative things into sort of positive things and then into actions. If I could find out who I needed to talk to, then I could just contact them and ask if they would have time for, like, a coffee, you know, not, that, not approach them in a way that I'd be, you know, hitting them up for a job, but just to kind of talk to them. Cause I'd one really big fear would be that you take the one thing that always really makes you happy which for me is personal style and giving people a sense of that. The thought of taking that and turning that into a business and then risking failure and turning that into a business, that could be quite devastating. So um, what are you going to do in the next 72 hours, Sue? I actually want to revisit my life priorities right. um, and my goals. I've got a lot of ideas now. Um, which is great and that will actually start me going. I, I find that a real hump sometimes just to get going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once I do that, I'm fine. Okay. I'm definitely ready to make changes. I'm determined to make changes, but I'm also fearful of making changes. I need to get started pretty quickly or I will lose the momentum. I mean, I'm a pretty big ideas person and I'm a pretty poor um, doer, so. I think for me, the hardest part will be discipline and follow-up. Yeah, it's important that I kind of crack the whip and, and keep an eye on, you know, keeping the ball rolling. OK, the safe way to step on this boat is to put your two feet on this side of the boat, grab this rail and then go over the lifeline. Mm -hmm. Go for it, Sue. Three months have passed since the workshop. And for Sue Nunn, the changes are well underway. If I could do it tomorrow and actually afford to keep living, I, I would give up my job and take something a lot lower paying and a lot less stress. I'd be quite happy to do that. But at the moment, I'm financially committed up to my eyeballs, so um, there's, there's not a lot of room to move in that regard. Started sailing, which has been great. Love it. Going back to the gym. I haven't started meditation yet, but I should be doing that in the next week or so. Got myself a journal, which I found really useful. Spending a lot of time on the budget, figuring out how much money I have and, and realistically what I can do. I'd love to be able to say in six months' time, my life's just going to be perfect and wonderful, but it's not. This is going to be hard work and this is going to take a certain amount of time. And I hate putting that kind of finite period in place because 
Well, I don't know if it's going to be better by the time I get there, but I know that I'm, I'm at least going to be on the road and I'm at least going to be on the path. Today, Sherry, we're going to go through your wardrobe spaces piece by piece and I'm going to take out each item and I'll kind of give you a face looking like, yeah, this is great, I think we should keep it on. I'm Thanks to her sure supportive husband, Kendall Serich hasn't had to work since the workshop. After three months, she's finally getting down to business on her dream career as a personal style consultant. Let's go. Okay. This week was um, a pretty busy week. I've registered a business name and I am trading under Style Savvy. I've registered for my AVN, set up GST and registered a domain name. So it's all real and really happening and I'm ready to do business. So we'll definitely be keeping that one. Today, Kendall is giving friend Sherry Winkler a complimentary wardrobe workout. Normal price, $150. I haven't seen this one come out of the wardrobe, to be honest. You obviously don't like it that much because it doesn't have a special hanger, so that might say something about whether we should keep it or not, but let's just have a look. My approach with clients is that I want the experience to be really fun for them. You want to be direct and you want to kind of build some humour into it, but you don't want to be too cruel. Really? How did you feel when you wore it? I didn't feel that bad. <laughs> Probably just toss them. Sort of paper bag like shape, isn't it? Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. We don't even need to look at that. No. You can't you just see me wearing that? No, no. I can't. Over there. She's a lovely skirt and it's a bit unusual, but the top is just. I like this dress, and you're going to tell me you don't like it. Oh, listen, you know, <laughs> all, dis one is all, all decisions at the end of the day are up to you. I can only tell you what I think you should do. Sometimes I think, well, you know, perhaps I shouldn't do this because, I don't, you know, it's not really my background and, you know, there are probably people better qualified to do it. But at the end of the day, I really love doing it. I enjoy it. You know, I think I've got a fairly good idea of sort of, of what's what. So, yeah, it's worth giving it a shot anyway. Today we're heading up to uh, the Blue Mountains. We're doing a program for McDonald's. Last week I was in uh, Hayman Island, which is a great venue for uh, uh, Swartzkopf, a hair care company, and then in Sanctuary Cove for uh, the Commonwealth Bank. Next week I'm off to uh, Port Douglas for Zurich, and then later in the week uh, down to Melbourne for Hill Ross. So it's a reasonably busy time over the next couple of weeks, but uh, you know some nice locations and some great groups, so looking forward to it. What I'd like you to do, if everyone could stand, please, everyone could stand. Find yourself a partner just to work with for 60 seconds. Hands up if you have a partner, don't really like the look of them, want to change with someone else. Anyone? By dealing in the corporate market, I feel like we can reach more people. So instead of the intensive weekend workshop where we might have a group of 15 people, um, if I can speak to 1,000 people or through the corporate programs, 1,200 people are on our one-year program. So it's having much more impact. What I'd like to do is sort of help the average person yeah. in terms of helping them demystify what's presented in sort of fashion magazines right. in particular. Cause Six months after the workshop, really and Kendall and is still mostly talking about, about her new business. Today, she's getting feedback from fashion editor Melissa Hoyer. So, you know, I think there's certainly a a market and a niche for what you're doing absolutely no question it's great to get that feedback yes. from you because i think you know i started off with an idea and sort of done a little bit of research but um you know it's to really get some feedback and saying that you know i've got some merit in what i'm doing and then i need to you know it propels me into my next step i'm currently working on my website so great. i hope to have that up within the next um two weeks and um, i think and every aspect of my life is just about change. I've had a big focus on sort of relationships and family which has been great and so I've really kind of pushed through with making the decision to start my own business and do all of the legwork for getting that started so I really feel I'm just ready to kind of conquer the world <laughs> in some ways. After that hundredth phone call I thought I have to meet you. <laughs> I love to be persistent of course you know I'm, finally I've worn you down. <laughs> Eight months since the workshop and all of Sunan's progress could be at risk. She's been asked to interview for a more senior position that promises to keep her even busier. 
After a lot of freaking out and panicking and soul searching, I, I, just, I told them I'd put my hand in the ring and interview for it. It was really difficult to even decide to interview for it because I know it would be a lot of extra pressure and I, I've just gone through the whole last year where I'm trying to think oh, I need more balance in my life and I need less stress. Or make the sacrifice for two years, knowing that I have an end goal. It's not going to be forever, but if I can get in there and get the experience and I can get some money saved, then yeah, it would be worth it. Freeze! Oh, oh, freeze! I think the goal should be this big this year. Ah, yeah, yeah setting high goals. Your penis should be this big. Yes, this it is. I, that, that wide. My penis is this big. Yes, this yes, year. I've heard that about you. I had a detachable penis. Yes, it was about this big. yes, freeze. Thank you. Yes, oh. yes. Uh, I think you're, you've got two very nice breasts. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, I think that when Ian is not working on stage, he likes to fool around on stage. He and some actor friends set up theatre sports troupe Explosive Minds several years ago. It's Hutch and Joe Silo, come on, come on, come on. Because life by design's so busy, it's just really, it's, it's a nice treat for me to come out and be able to do this. You know, I might just do it maybe five or ten times throughout the year. And, and there's also competitive improvising, and I do that a few times a year as well. So now, we present to you the story of Aristotle's trip to Greece. Aristotle went onto a plane flying toward Greece. Suddenly, he said, I am very sexy. Getting out of the plane, he discovered a greasy woman. A lot of people say, you know, do you have the perfect lifestyle? I think I've got a really good lifestyle. Um, it's not always perfect, but I know what I need to do to make it more in line with what I really want to do. And that's the key. It's having a template to fine tune and constantly move forward. If it was perfect, I actually think it'd be pretty boring. After all the anguish Sunan went through over a new job, someone else took off with it. But with three international trips in the last three months, Sue's career is still on the move. This time, she's on a one-week round trip to the UK for five days of meetings. Thank you. When I took the course, I suppose I was hoping for quite a big change. You go into these things all enthusiastic and thinking you're going to change the world, but the reality is that it doesn't really happen that way. But I suppose what's different is that um, even though I'm still busy, I'm actually making more time for myself and I'm enjoying that downtime. Before I wasn't really doing anything apart from working and eating and sleeping and there was no sort of fun stuff for me to do. So this last year has been pretty much very focused on me and I suppose pretty self-absorbed and selfish in a way but it's been good. Twelve months since the workshop and 14 clients down the line, Kendall Serich is throwing a party to celebrate. But it turns out that Kendall needed more than Ian's strategies to launch her new life, as husband Ed can confirm. I basically became Kendall's conscience. I, I became her driving force whether it was getting angry with her or being supportive. I tried every tact. Kendall says problems started straight after the workshop. Instead of taking Ian's advice and taking action within 72 hours, Kendall took a month off. The further I got into the year, the harder it got. I got to a point where I recognised that there was more procrastinating going on than anything else. It was probably around about maybe June, July when reality struck and, and Ed basically came to me with, you know, you're really taking the piss now, it's been six months. Because I couldn't work out if she was putting all this effort in, why no clients were walking in. We were getting no leads, there was no marketing plan, there was no business plan that apparently was being worked on. Um, so my patients did wear thin at that point. So then came this sort of ultimatum of... Um, you know, basically get a job or, or, or get serious about this. We worked on a few ideas at the time. Um, we sat down, brainstormed, um, came up with a few agenda items, which now one of 
Kendall's friends is involved with as well and little tasks that she had to do. And that really did help, although I felt like I was, you know, a child, you know, being punished <laughs> by, by these adults. At the same time, it was exactly what I needed to get me back on track. Yes, I've definitely achieved in the last year what I wanted to achieve. I haven't. It's not a static process, though. It's something that's going to continue to change and evolve. And, and I would hope that I'd be doing different things this year and the year after and, and um, continuing to work on that and grow with that. I think the risk of failing in your dream is less than the risk in not giving it a go in the first place. Our quest, I believe, should always be, well, how can I make my life a little bit happier? And it comes back to our mission at Life by Design is if we're increasing the quality of other people's lives, we're increasing our own quality of life as well. And what a great job to have. <laughs>